Very good morning. Welcome to Dreamforce 2017. Uh, today we are here to discuss about how adoption of Salesforce DX has changed life for Salesforce Industries. So uh, I just want to make a note that we would be taking Q&A at the end of the session. So I would like to get started by briefly introducing ourselves. Uh, my name is Shafiullah. I'm a senior DevOps engineer at Industries Cloud. Hi, I'm Akshay Patravali, also senior DevOps engineer at Salesforce Industries. Yeah. So I would like to give a brief introduction on what Salesforce Industries Cloud primarily deals with. So Salesforce Industries Cloud has two major products. One is the financial service cloud and health cloud. It has its own base package and Einstein Analytics, which is an extension package. Please note that these packages are developed on top of Salesforce platform. So in order to support this cloud, there are a lot of complexities involved. So the ISVs are now using different additions along with the combination of our cloud. So they have uh, addition with respect to developer addition, with respect to enterprise addition, professional and unlimited addition. And they're also using a lot of Salesforce features such as Shield, Communities, Wave, Einstein, and so on. And developers are using different deployment types, like unmanaged deployment. Each app has approximately 3,500 components per cloud. And along with that, we also deal with packages, such as beta package and release packages. As DevOps engineer, we also have challenges of rolling out the infrastructure to support such a complex features and additions. We have to manage and implement CI CD for the team, also propose a release strategy, and implement the release process as well. Along with that, we also have to provision environments and do the production deployment to the customers as well. So as an engineer, we always have to think there has to be a simple way of supporting all these complex features and additions. So let's look into a traditional method how de developers using Salesforce Org today. So here in the slide, what you see is a life of a developer. So here's Mrs. Appy, and she has her code in GitHub, which is a code versioning system. She uses the tool and migration tool to deploy into the Salesforce org. But here's a scenario she has to deal with. Our customers are using different additions and features that she has to work on. She has one investigation, she has one bug, and user stories. So she has to work on different features and additions as well. Let's see how Salesforce DX can help this developer. So again, she's the same developer, but now she uses Salesforce DX she, she's working on feature X, and she creates an org1, which is a DA edition. And using CLI command, she converts her app into DX format. And then she, uh, using the convert command, she can push the code and destroy the org in needed. Note that this is an iterative process. As per her need, she can create a new org and destroy as per, as per the business needs. So this is the power of DX that, ha that enables developer to uh, create org as per the business needs. So let's also look into the current environment in CICD. This is a typical testing stages that any ISV would be following in order to promote a code from pull request all the way to pre-production. These are the different stages, like pull request, which is a feature testing. And imagine dev integrated to be a combination of features being tested together. And you have UAT, which, is, which deals with uh, packaging here. So as mentioned earlier, we, we, I did say that uh, we deal with unmanaged deployment and beta packages and release packages as well. So just to give a brief guess on how what beta packages and installation deals with is, imagine a beta package to be like a new client who has bought a fresh license, and he's using the license for the first time and release package to be an existing customer where the customer has already has the data and the org is getting push upgraded to the latest version. So in order to deal with this different stages, what we have observed in the CI CD, in order to recover any build, it would typically take one hour to two days. Why is it so complex? Why is it taking so much time? 
the problems that we observed was primarily due to org inconsistencies, because we have to support different addition and features. And UAT and push upgrade, we observed that cleaning up org is complex. It's, it's primarily because of the type of relationships or the metadata or the relationships that customer creates, and it's hard to clean it. So there is a lot of developers' time and even developers, DevOps time involved in fixing these builds. And that's why each build recovery would take from one day to two days. So let's, let's compare how adoption of Salesforce DX in CI/CD environment can help us. So this is pretty much the same stage. The time before is one to two days. And I'm going to replace the static org with the scratch orgs now. Now you can see the time recovered after adoption of Salesforce DX. It has recovered from one day to two hours. Why? That's primarily because the problems that we faced earlier are no more. So we have resolved org inconsistencies. We can pull in orgs as per the need. And there are no more cleanup issues. Because every time we create a new scratch org and dismantle the old org, there's no more uh, same org being cleaned up. So it saves a lot of time. It has also minimized a lot of broken builds and less time to fix any issues. So you can see there is a good recovery after adoption of this Salesforce DX. Now I would like to call Akshay to give some uh, more scenarios with respect to pull requests. Over to Akshay. Thank you, Shafi. So let's uh, thank you for uh, going through our environment stacks and how we implemented Salesforce DX to actually recover certain build times, which was very helpful for developers. Uh, now, now let's get into some use cases. Say I have uh, two use cases. I have an Einstein uh, feature branch for my uh, development. I also have a communities feature branch for my spike story. Now I need to use a static org. Uh, deploy Einstein code first, uh, the build succeeds, I test my feature branch, and the build is complete. But at this time, the communities branch is still in waiting state. When I start deploying communities into that org, it's very likely that the build will fail because communities, I may have missed enabling in that org. This is a very common scenario across any uh, uh, cloud that you may miss certain features, you may miss certain permissions, and because of that, the build keeps failing. So let's implement this same scenario and use Salesforce DX method. Here, I have the same pull requests, Einstein and communities. The greatest advantage of Salesforce DX here is you can create your own template and flavor of orgs. You can create your own uh, flavor of orgs like based, of, uh, based on JSON files. Each JSON file, you can mention any features you want, any permissions you want to add. And with that, you can pass that JSON file through command line and create your own short-lived scratch orgs. You can then deploy its respective Einstein code into Einstein the, uh, org and the communities into communities org, all in parallel. And then once your deployment is complete, you can test your features and destroy the orgs. That's a very great benefit of Salesforce DX. Versus traditional orgs, you have to templatize. You, can, you have to create dot templates, which is very bulky. Let's get into another scenario of a classical view of pull request build queue. Now, anybody who has worked with Jenkins knows the, uh, the build queue for pull requests. Uh, all the developers have completed their development, and the pull request is in waiting state. Let's implement the, sales, uh, the, let's implement the uh, static org method first. We start building pull requests on that static org, while you see all other pull requests are in waiting state. This is a huge bottleneck right now, because any pull request that needs to build has to wait for that org to be freed up. Once the build uh, for first pull request completes, that's when you can start building the second pull request. This, assuming each pull request takes one hour, the whole build queue would take me around five hours to complete. Now let's take the same scenario and implement using Salesforce DX method. I have my classical build queue. Pull requests are already in the build state. The greatest, again, benefit of Salesforce DX is you can spin up your own short-lived scratch org for every pull request. So 
you can spin up uh, n number of uh, scratch orgs, deploy the pull requests within the same transaction. The results will be replied back to the Jenkins, and then within an hour, you complete the whole build queue. This is a great advantage of Salesforce DX in parallelizing pull requests and implementing your build queue. Now let's get into another uh, usage metrics of Salesforce DX versus static org success rate. On my y-axis, you see the successful builds versus on the x-axis, the total number of builds. The black box here are representing static org success versus the white boxes where it, uh, which represents st Salesforce DX orgs. Now, during our initial implementation of just 100 builds, we found that Salesforce DX gave uh, double the success rate than a static org success rate. And as we implemented this across all stacks, we found that the success rate for Salesforce DX drastically improved. This is a great benefit in faster deployments and also less number of failures for the developers. Now let me uh, get back Shafi here to go over the summaries. Thank you, Akshay, for giving an overview of different pull request scenarios. So I'd like to summarize what did we complete so far. So defining complexity and identifying the key areas where CX, Salesforce DX can be applied actually helped us. We also learned the developer experience before and after adoption of Salesforce DX. We also understood the CI-CD environment and, and solved key challenges with respect to pull requests with supporting different features and additions, build queues, and also parallelization. We also saw the huge improvement release over release after adoption of Salesforce DX. So what are the key takeaways here? How did we scale? What are the strategic planning that can help any organization or ISV partner today that they are dealing with packages? So with respect to design, the trail, trailhead, trailhead and SFDX documentation definitely help. And also, SFDX CLI also has a help command which can give more insights. So also do set up a JWT authentication method for headless uh, authentication between your dev hub and Jenkins server. Predefine your org types and the features which are commonly used by your organization. Also protect your security and app credentials that has been created from dev hub from uh, getting host. So it's a security concern. So with respect to impl implementation, use your convert command to convert Salesforce DX, your app into DX format. Also embrace the power of logging that Salesforce DX provides. Let's say if you run into any DX issues, you can log into, check this log to see what is a problem. Also, Salesforce DX supports all the output format in CSV, JSON, uh, CSV, and makes helps you in customizing the logic. You can also link multiple namespaces with the dev hub. So let's say if you're doing namespace deployment, this will actually help. If you, if you like to scale from here, you can also enforce a good cleanup strategy for the orgs, if needed. And also, uh, aliasing your org helps. You can create uh, different reports based on the usage metrics, how devs are getting used, how CICD is getting used. So aliasing org definitely helps. If you have certain use cases where certain features are not supported by Salesforce DX, use a template ID in order to support developers. And you can also link multiple dev hubs. So thank you for attending this session. You can uh, attend other trailheads and other sessions on SFDX. And also, you can uh, go through the trailheads by Salesforce. Uh, thank you all. Thank we are you. now open for Q&A. <coughs> this one. Yeah. OK. So, so the question is, how Salesforce DX can help in destructive changes? 
So there can be you two use case scenarios. Let's say you really want to destroy it. So, so this is a typical scenario where how you do the normal operation with Salesforce org, you can typically continue to do that. You can push, pull, force, overwrite. So that's supported. But let's say you you this destructive changes are you really want to clean up. That's a that's a cleanup scenario. You can as well ignore this org and recreate a new org. You you would uh, you can template and create a new org so that uh, there is no old references in the org. And to just answer that more in detail, you can have each scratch org creates with its own alias name. So even if you have the same username, the alias name will actually differentiate between each scratch org. So when you're using destructive changes, it's actually referring to that particular org. Yeah, one more question. OK. You can go ahead. Yeah, so we couldn't get a time to give a live demo, but you could, you could see in the standards a Salesforce DX domain. So my domain is set up automatically. We don't spend any time on setting up my domain. It's auto set. Uh, so there is no need of like you spending time and like you know identifying how to set my domain. So any scratch org that has been created is as good as like ready for deployments. You can use the login.salesforce.com or its own DNS record to do any deployments, especially with respect to login URL and if you're using ant migration tool. Can you be louder? I, I could hint here. So, oh, connected you. So you are asking if I can use the connected app? Yes. Yeah, it's so it's pretty much supposed the same way. Once you have the scratch orgs being created, you can pretty much do any operation that you do with the Salesforce org. Uh, the only thing is, these are short-lived orgs. You want to use it for like you know for testing purpose, experimenting purpose. So this is a really good scenario. You'll not be spending so much. It's it's like an on-demand basis. So. Whatever the static org supports, pretty much the same functionality being supported with the scratch org as well. So your question is, can I create a sand sandbox copy of the existing so scratch org? Yes. So pretty much. As we do the old operation, you can you can do the same thing. So we have something called black tab where you can, or you can, if you're a customer, you can actually request Salesforce to uh, enable the creating ability of creating a sandbox. But what ideally the Salesforce best practices enforces is use the Trailforce uh, Salesforce org in order to create a template or the sandbox copy. You can also use the same sandbox copy template ID to spin the further rocks so that you can have that same copy of the UAT as well. Yes, yes, yeah. That's what. No. Yeah, as long as you capture the trial force template in the sandbox org, you can use that using your dev hub to spin up another org. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, th those were the good questions. Thank you all for attending this session. We will be here still for picking up uh, questions off stage. And uh, as I said, like do attend other uh, Salesforce sessions, which will help you in getting accelerated on how you can uh, use Salesforce DX in your organization. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.